हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम अगेन इन न्यू लेक्चर इन अ सीरीज दैट वाज गोइंग ऑन एंड द सीरीज वाज फॉर्म्स ऑफ पोइट्री इन टुडेज सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्म व्हिच इज ऑलमोस्ट यू नो एवरीबडी इज वेल एक्वेंटेड विद दैट इज एन एलर्जी जनरल आइडिया अबाउट एलर्जी इज दैट इट इज ए पोएम ऑफ मॉर्निंग इट लेमेंट्स अबाउट सम डेड पर्सन और इट लेमेंट्स अबाउट सम लॉस सो दिस इज ऑफकोर्स वन डेफिनेशन बट वी कैन नॉट से दैट दिस डेफिनेशन वॉज ऑलवेज देयर अर्लियर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द ओरिजिन ऑफ द एलर्जी इट ओरिजिनेटेड इन ग्रीस एंड देर वॉज यू नो दिस काइंड दिस फॉर्म हैज कवर्ड ऑलमोस्ट वाइड वेराइटी ऑफ टॉपिक्स देयर वर वॉर एलर्जीज देयर वर लव एलर्जीज देयर वर पोलिटिकल वर्सेज लेमेंटेशन फॉर डेड वर ऑल्सो देयर बट दैट वॉज यू नो इंक्लूडिंग वेराइटी ऑफ द टॉपिक्स एंड वाइड रेंड ऑफ रेंज ऑफ सब्जेक्ट एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट बोथ ग्रेव एज वेल एज हैप्पी सब्जेक्ट्स वर देयर सो द ग्रीक एक्चुअली जज द कम्पोजिशन नॉट बाई द सब्जेक्ट मैटर दिस जज इट्स कम्पोजिशन बाई इट्स फॉर्म For example, let us see what kind of form was called elegy at that time. It was uh, written in elegiac measure couplet, and this was composed of a dactylic hexameter, which was followed by dactylic pentameter. So, any form written in this meter, where a dactylic hexameter was followed by dactylic pentameter, was ranked as an elegy. irrespective of its theme and subject matter so here we will notice that the entire focus was on the form of poetry rather than the subject matter those person who are not clear about dactylic hexameter and dactylic pentameter here i have also described that one stressed and two unstressed syllable six times in the first line is called dactylic hexameter and one stressed and two unstressed syllable five times in the second line is called dactylic pentameter so this was the uh, composition or the form of the elegy in ancient greece now modern connotation let us understand what uh, kind of form elegy has taken in modern times in modern uses it is the theme or subject matter that matters not the form entirely so now it is usually a lamentation for the dead people talk people are talking about some dead person or lamenting over some dead person or uh, though it may be inspired by some somber theme such as unrequited love the fall of a famous city and uh, like this so mostly in uh, present form it is about some loved one who has been you know now in uh, not in the life or who has lost his life and we are lamenting over it so uh, if we talk about that uh, what uh, distinguishes lyric from other form so lyric is somehow less spontaneous and often very elaborative in style uh, like the ode and sometimes uh, uh, some exceptions of pure lyrical form may be noticed sometimes pure lyric may also be termed as elegy but it is some exception like in tennyson's uh, poem break 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 we can say that it is a, v- a very good lyric but it works as an elegy now elegy usually aims at an effect of dignity and solemnity without a sense of a strain or artificiality this is very important point that its effect is very dignified and in that dignity we don't see any weaving of art- artificiality we don't see that some artificial elements or notes or some conscious effort is being noticed here so it is to be read as a uh, so mostly what happens that uh, in elegy the author is very conscious about the work of art so uh, it is to be read as conscious work of art not a spontaneous expression of sorrow it doesn't come uh, spontaneously rather poet thinks uh, in a very conscious manner for example uh, this uh, effect was magnificently achieved by gray in his elegy written in country churchyard 
he used quartain form in iambic pentameter which is ideal uh, which is supposed to be ideal for this allergy so in this we can understand that uh, allergy is written consciously to achieve the desired effect by the poet the allergy lends itself more readily than other forms of poetry to discursive reflection on the part of the poet a very important part of uh, fact about allergy is you can include so many different different themes or you can juxtapose many different themes into one and variety of the themes can be dis discussed in single poem so for example death is so vast and evocative a subject <clears throat> that it leads the poet to reasons of thought he might normally explore so many times it happens that the subject or theme of the death is not directly approached sometimes what happens that uh, it start with some love themes and with some other common points and it reaches to the death or sometimes it takes philosophical turn sometimes the death is the inspiration and soul theme and other times it is merely the common starting point and then other points emerges from that point so is spe speculation on the nature of death and thereafter tribute to friends poet's own reactions own sentiment many other things can find way from that point of death for example if we see that some of the famous elegies milton laments the degradation of poetry and religion lycidas though lycidas is supposed to be focused on the death of his learned friend edward king but we see that it takes flight to other topics also the same way tennyson philosophizes on the puzzles of life and destiny in memoriam while it is also supposed to be written on the death of his friend arthur helm matthew arnold pauses to reflect on the course of the life of mortal man on the earth in rugby chapel and though the focus of the elegy is his towards his father's uh, you know death or grave 15 years after when he pays a visit over there so we are watching that ex apart from the uh, lamenting there are so many other topics which are being discussed so it presents the discursive subject matter in that now uh, come to another form of the elegy dirge many times dirge comes and we are confused at what a dirge is all about so it is also a versified expression of grief on the occasion of so it is a, also a lamenting poem a person's death but it differs from the elegy in some some point you know for example dirge is somehow short uh, than the elegy it is less formal elegy is very formal and very conscious art of writing and usually dirge is represented as a text to be sung it is supposed that dirge is made for singing so example is shakespeare's full fathom five thy father lies this is also very good dirge so don't ever be confused about dirge it is also a part of elegy or poem a uh, lamenting poem and but it is somehow different from elegy now come to another definition thronody and monody thronody is actually just used as a synonym for dirge is mainly used in equivalent for dirge so you can say that dirge and thronody can be treated equivalently monody of course is somehow different again it is a lamenting song but is used for an elegy or dirge which is presented as the utterance of a single person so mono actually defines single person so when it is utterance of a single person in the poetry then it is called monody again it is a part of elegy for example john milton describes his lycidas in the subtitle as a monody the same way matthew arnold also calls his elegy on the ah close thyrsus a monody so monody is not actually apart from elegy it's a part of elegy now come to the pastoral elegy again one uh, mostly uh, you know written form is pastoral elegy and you all know that when we talk about pastoral it also deals with the country folks and shepherd's life and country life or rough life of people it is an important subtype of elegy so it is called subtype of elegy which is rep which represents both the poet and the one he mourns here both are represented poet as well as the person for uh, whom he is mourning and who is also usually a poet 
for as shepherd so shepherd he is uh, presented as a shepherd the latin word for shepherd is a pastor it is a very important thing it may be asked in some exams also that latin word for shepherd is called pastor so this was originated now question arises who originated pastoral elegy so it is originated by the sicilian greek poet theocritus whose idylls and epigrams are the earliest poem known to us written in the pastoral manner now what happened after that later latin poet virgil perfected this form and whose eclogues and georgics are noted for their vivid treatment of the scenes and the labors of the countryside so virgil in a way stimulated this form to another level and then it was revived in italy after a long time during the 15 and 15 uh, 16th century and uh, you can understand that at that time renaissance was also going on and it was uh, a classical culture was being revived so soon many person started you know experimenting over this form and another parts of europe were also involved this including england so it may be said that to have it has taken roots in english soil with spencer shepherd's calendar now question arises uh, who brought this into england so spencer shepherd calendar you can take it as the uh, root work of uh, you know introducing elegiac form or uh, pastoral elegy here it followed a convention by which the poet represented himself as a shepherd bewailing the loss of a companion the manner of speech and the setting were borrowed from rustic life you all know that in shepherd's life um, uh, spencer has described uh, shepherd's life for entire 12 month from january to december and it is a very good pastoral elegy so it is entirely introducing the rustic life and uh, their communication conversation there so it is the pastoral elegy which introduced pastoral elegy uh, into england and some of the pastoral conventions although adopted to an industrial age and a non christian world view survive still in walt whitman if we think that it remained in uh, till england no in america also it was practiced and walt whitman's elegy on lincoln is when relaxed last in the dooryard bloomed is one of the famous one in the last two decades of the 20th century there was a strong revival of the elegy especially in america For example these elegies were written to mourn the devastation and death wrought by aids few or you say that a few student know that for aids acquired immune, immune deficiency syndrome which is supposed to be the great disease uh, which is almost uh, still uh, um, not cured fully or so among talented young intellectuals there were pastoral elegy written on this or elegies written on this one of the famous example is michael clain's poet for life 76 poets respond to aids is a great elegy collection over this so uh, dear learners today you have come to know about the elegy which is a great form in poetry so keep uh, you know studying and keep going through the books and try to uh just stretch your imagination and try to learn more and more and uh, till then thank you have a nice day and we'll be discussing a next form of poetry in our next lecture thank you very much